everyone for joining us this morning. We'll get started with Red Wings Executive Vice President and General Manager, Steve Eiserman. Please let us know in the chat if you'd like to ask a question. And we'll start with Elaine St. James. Hi, Steve. Hi, Elaine. What gives you confidence about the Wings headed into this season? Well, um, uh, you know, we, as you know, we've made several changes. We signed some free agents in the off season um, with the idea that uh, would make, improve our team. Um, we're hopeful that all our young players continue to take a step forward. And uh, um, again, with all the hope of becoming a better hockey team, I, I believe we'll be a better hockey team this year. I expect us to be. Um, having said that, with a lot of changes, it can take some time for things to settle in, including a new coaching staff. It can take some time for everybody to get uh, familiar with one another, um, the coaches to really understand, know the players and, and how to best utilize them and get the most out of them. So uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. I expect us to be a better hockey team, and I hope that translates to more wins. I know, you know, playoffs are ultimately the goal, but what is building on last season maybe look like realistically? I mean, it, we've talked a lot about improving defensively. Is that maybe a, one of the, the top aspect? Um, well, certainly, you know, I, I think we were uh, 30th in goals against in the league. Uh, we were, you know, our, our special teams, both uh, power play and penalty killing, were at the bottom of the league. Um, you, you know, we want to obviously improve in the, all those areas so that, that that'll – translate to win so um defensively we have to cut the goals against down whether that's through you know i, I mean it is through better goaltending it is through better defensive play um hopefully the players that we brought in on the on that play the position uh uh improve our team and uh, and then collectively the whole the whole mindset of the team has to change a little bit and uh, it's not like we're not going to try and score we want to do that as well but uh, there is a certain responsibility for all players when they're on the ice to have in the back of their mind, regardless of where the puck is, is to be on the right side of the puck. And sometimes the right side of the puck is defensively and managing the puck. All those things will be uh, um, uh, uh, attributes or ideas that, that, that Derek is that are going to really have firmly impl uh, implant in the player's mind. So when they're out there playing, they have to think responsibly, and that's what good teams do. Last one for me, just with Simon Edmondson, is he maybe a, as poised or prepared as you can be? I mean, World Juniors, the SHL, to come in and, and stake a claim for an NHL job? Um, you know, the uh, Simon's 19, uh, one year from his draft, you know, uh, Moritz had the benefit of, you know, playing a year, as you know, playing a year in the American League and then going over during the pandemic and playing a year in Sweden. So got that extra year of development before he stepped in. I think uh, I think Simon has a has a has a good chance. Uh, I can't sit here today and tell you he's definitely going to be in the lineup on opening night. Um, but we're pleased with a lot of the things we saw in the prospects tournament and the three games that he played. But I do believe playing, uh, you know, the Swedish elite league is, is a, uh, the Swedish hockey league is a very good league, very competitive, a lot of good hockey players. And it's a great stepping stone for the NHL playing in the world juniors this summer is, is, is a tremendous tournament to play in and, and a great preparation to come into camp. So, um, he's a good athlete. Uh, he's had, he had a great season last year and, and a good off season, um, and we'll see how he does. So, Thanks, Steve. Ted Colfin. Hey, Steve, you touched that on it, obviously, when he was hired. But what does Derek bring to the table? What are, what are his strengths? What should we expect from him? Well, I think uh, the fact that he's come from, you know, been a part of, like, you know, as recently as last year, a team that's been to the Stanley Cup Finals three years in a row, um, uh, worked with, you know, great players. Uh, the system that Tampa played is, is, is a very, uh, effective style of play. I think he'll bring maybe not exactly the same way that John Cooper would run things, but he'll do it in his own way. But I, I would assume, and I expect fully that he's learned a lot about, you know, even his first year in Tampa where they got, you know, got beat, swept in the first round of the playoffs, tremendous learning experience and able to take that into the next next uh, three reasons i think he's you know valuable experience for him his time in tampa and at the other levels uh, as the head coach whether it be the american hockey league the east coast league and, and junior hockey in the ushl as a head coach um 
uh, he's got that experience as a head coach. The only thing he hasn't done is do it in the NHL. So I think all of that prepares him to do this job. You know, we obviously talk a lot prior to uh, uh, hiring as the head coach. Uh, philosophy that we're at one philosophy on coaching uh, on systems on the ice how he wants his team to play how he handles situations um, and uh, you know how he's going to get the most out of this collection of players so but ultimately I think one of his greatest uh, uh, attributes would would really be his communication skills with everybody everybody that he has to touch uh, uh, in order to work with, whether it be the you know players most importantly, but you know management, staff, uh, even the media. I think he's uh, uh, and talking with everybody that that has worked with him, they all uh, point that out as one of his greatest strengths. And Steve, I mean, like you touched on it, a new, a lot of new faces, new coaching staff. For goodness' sake. As far as chemistry, is that just coming into the uh, to the ice every day, coming into practice every day, and just working through it and get more comfortable with each other, basically? Um, well, I think it it starts with character, um, you know, in building a team, guys buying into the program, uh, and 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 you know, wanting to be a part of it and willing to put the team first, and then you know, it moves into the work ethic uh, on and off the ice and the commitment to the team, both on and off the ice. So uh, it just takes time for things to settle in where players play, who they play with, get to know the coaching staff, the way things are done. You know, players coming in from other organizations, uh, just getting to know one another. And I think it's a good start of being here and in Traverse city, you get the players all here together. Um, you know, they, they, uh, spend their three hours each day in the morning and then they get the opportunity whether it's to go play golf or to socialize in many ways go out for dinner and and start to build the relationships and get to know one another hey last one and you know, obviously everybody's talking about it just your relationship with scott harris i mean how did did you how long have you known him and what kind of what do you what um, do you, you know yeah you know i act yeah, well, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I can't tell you. I, I know of him very well um, and following, uh, you know, the uh, his time with the Cubs. Um, I actually got a chance. Uh, Chelly uh, took me to a game in Chicago and he knew the Cubs very well. I can't remember. It was a few years ago now, but got a chance to sit with uh, with with Scott and and the, the management team of the Cubs. That was my initial meeting with them during a game and picked their brain. They were uh, uh, very gracious and, and polite to me and bothering them in the middle of a game. So that was my first meeting. And then we got a chance to meet, uh, last week, uh, uh, while Scott was in town and, and talk a little bit about, uh, Detroit, uh, about the different companies, about the Red Wings, about philosophies on building a team, pick his brain a little bit. So, um, I really enjoyed the meeting, um, look forward to in the future, picking his brain more as a, a wealth of experience and knowledge uh, uh, for me. He's significantly younger than I am, but a tremendous, uh, tremendous resume uh, and a very uh, tremendous education and background, uh, not only uh, scholastically, but in, in the business of baseball and business of pro sports. So I really look forward to, uh, to uh, exchanging ideas from learning and observing and watching, uh, watching Scott lead the Tigers forward. A lot younger than a lot of us, Steve. Thanks for this. Good stuff. And Sarkhan? Yeah, hi, Steve. Uh, just uh, what are some of the uh, just the challenges for guys coming off strong rookie years like uh, Cider and Raymond that they face in their second season uh, when the league is a little bit more familiar with them? Yeah, I think one is each individual's expectations. Um, you know, it was hard work. If you ask each of those players, you know, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Lucas and Moritz, you asked about last year, it was hard work. And uh, to just to every day to show up and play and practice and perform, and you look to build off that and get better. Um, it can, you know, I, we all hope everyone, including those two young guys, get off to a great start. Sometimes it doesn't always happen. And you just kind of got to focus on plan where there was no expectation last year. It was all new. Uh, things don't necessarily always go as planned. And you just got to learn to roll with it and just kind of stick with it and get better. I'm confident in both of those kids with their attitude um, that they will continue to become better hockey players. And that doesn't necessarily mean goals and assists it just is overall hockey players but the challenge is expecting it to get easier unfortunately it never gets easier it just it 
it ultimately gets harder and harder. You just get more comfortable with it and, and learn how to deal with it daily. And do you have any uh, updates on the injured guys as far as uh, time frames for uh, uh, like uh, Fabry and uh, Wallman yep. and Bissick? Yeah, I'll go. I'll run through it, and I don't have notes in front of me. But uh, if, if I miss somebody, please uh, uh, remind me. But you, it starts with Robbie Fabry. I anticipate, and it's a cautious return for for Robbie. Uh, but I expect him sometime in the new year, sometime after January one, maybe January fifteenth in there. But sometime a, after the new year, Robbie will come back. Uh, Mark Pisick, uh realistically is probably in that same time frame. Uh, Jake Wallman, uh, I expect him approximately middle of November to be back. Uh, that is four, um, five, one injury that you're not aware of, but uh, Andrew Kopp had, had uh, uh, abdominal surgery in the off season. We expect him to be at the latest back uh, uh, the first week of the regular season. Uh, I don't anticipate him uh, practice, uh, you know, participating in the preseason games, uh, but expect him to be ready to go at, you know, roughly a week, if not sooner into the regular season. Um, yeah, am I missing anybody from the big club? Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't think and so. And then the one, one other player who won't be here at the start of training camp um, uh, will be uh, Chase Pearson, who played a little bit for us at the start of, or at the end of the season last year, played in Grand Rapids. Uh, Jay, uh, Chase will be out indefinitely. He's dealing with some personal things and will be out indefinitely. Thanks, Steve. Okay. John Neal. Hey, Steve, um, just wondering, what was your message to Zadina this offseason? I guess, what do you want to see from him this fall? And, and is there a chance that maybe a fresh start with a, a new staff and a new contract, too, I guess, uh, can really help him? Well, we met at the end of the season, and, and my message uh, really to Philip was, I believe he's, he's, he's on the right path to becoming a real good player in the NHL. He's working at it. He, uh, he's learned to be... Uh, um, uh, to do the little things well, even if you're not scoring, you know, it goes to all G all young players, all scores in particular, always measure yourself on goals and assists production. And, you know, and it's, it's always, whether you're playing junior, whether you're playing in the American league and the NHL and in particular for these fair draft picks, everybody wants to see the goals and assists, measure it and goals and assists. And you get, you fall into that yourself thinking I got to produce, I got to produce ultimately if you do all the other things well, the pucks will go in the net for you. So my message was to Philip is continue to work at it, continue to do all the little things well, and the pucks will go in the net for you. That was my message for him. And, uh, you know, he's a hard worker. I, I think he's, uh, you know, he's beyond the, you know, being picked sixth overall and uh, that now he's, he's, he's working to, uh, he worked hard last year when I talked to our, our staff, our strength coaches and whatnot, his dedication off the ice. He really wants to be a good player and, and knows he's got things to improve upon. But uh, again, I, I think he's, I expect him to take another step forward. And I, I think his attitude is excellent. His work ethic is, is excellent. And, and that, you know, he just needs to stick with it. Um, and then on a different note, I guess, prospect wise, what did you see and like from what you saw uh, from Kosa um, here in this camp? Yeah, we, you know, he played half of two games, uh, but it was, uh, for me, very positive. Um, he, uh, you know, I know he and Phil and, and staff work uh, a lot on, on, you know, technique and stance and, you know, calming down and uh, just, you know, he was drafted uh, in a season where he played 22 games. It was a funny, like a, uh, an odd time, and he just needs – time on the ice reps. I think a lot of those kids that played Canadian junior hockey that year, unfortunately got, got, uh, uh, didn't play a lot. Some didn't play at all. And, and in particular for goaltenders who don't necessarily play every game, he just needs time. And, uh, what I did like, again, he was, he, he's, you see him, he's filling out physically. Uh, he's starting to look, he's very tall, but he's also starting to look wider, take up more space in the net. Technically he's, he's looking a little bit, uh, sounder and he'll continue to work at it. So it was very encouraging to watch the two, uh, the two hours that he had here last week. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Max Boltman. 
Hey, Steve, just to follow up on that, how do you kind of balance that with Kosa as you decide where to play him this year, knowing, you know, you want to get him as many reps as possible versus, you know, hands-on work with your goalie coaches? Yeah, well, number one, I think he needs to play games. That's most important. Uh, you know, you talk, your goalie co all the goalie coaches and your staff talk about numbers these players need before over the course of their junior college minor league careers before they're theoretically ready to start there's no specific but they have some general timelines and he's got uh he, he just needs experience um one most importantly we want him to play we want him to be in a good environment and playing a lot max i can't tell you today where that is we're going to let the process play itself out um uh you know it starts with training camp here he did well in the in his outings in the prospects tournament we'll see how he does in the main camp and we're comfortable, let them, you know, get into the preseason games and then just one step at a time and, uh, and decide what level he's ready for and, and what level he's going to play a lot. And then with Edvinson, you touched on, you know, him having a chance to make the team. What would be the things that you want to see from him in the preseason to know that, you know, he's ready for that and it's the decision for him? Well, I think a lot of it, again, as, as we say with Sebastian Kos, is I want him playing. I want him playing regular. Uh, I don't want him in another lineup. I don't want him not getting an opportunity on special teams, at least one of the units. So um, we'll figure out what level he's ready for. He will, you know, participate in the preseason. Um, I just, again, number one, he's only 19. Uh, I, I, most importantly that they play, we watch the benefits of all of our young guys, whether they're in Europe, the American league or junior in college playing a lot, uh, in all different situations, developing as players, um, uh, in games. Uh, I just think, I believe that's the way to go. And we'll kind of let his play dictate, um, number one in the preseason, how much he plays, and then we'll make a decision at some point. There's no real and fast date uh, as we outside, but most importantly, Max, I want him playing uh, a, a significant role, like a you know, six defenseman. I want him to be obviously in the top six uh, playing games. And then I'd like to see him, you know, participating in special teams in some form. And if that's not the case, then we'll, we'll, you know, decide where to where to go from there i guess with how many young d you're going to have in grand rapids between the guys who are coming over and the ones who were there last year like are you almost hoping that one of those guys can can make your teams just so that it's not so crowded in grand rapids <laughs> um you know with with uh you know the two injuries on our blue line with uh mark and jake uh, being out to start the season that gives opportunity for other guys to play and and maybe grab a spot and then once everybody's healthy it's a great uh problem to have um uh you know you we you know we you asked me about a couple of guys that played last week you look on the d uh um, two new guys that come over from Europe as well. And Albert Johansson and Emil Vero uh, performed very well last week as well. And Seth Barton was here who played in GR. We've got a lot of D, a lot of young guys. And again, if, if they're ready to play and, and they're ultimately, you know, better than say some of the veterans, then we might have to make a decision. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll kind of let, again, let that play itself out, but I'm encouraged that we have some, some young guys that are, are going to push not only in GR, but push in Detroit. And like I say, with those couple of injuries, it's, uh, to start the season and give some guys a great chance, you know, to, to, uh, to grab a spot. And then last thing for me, you, you talked about kind of getting to know Scott Harris, Chris Illich said you were kind of involved in that search like what was that experience like for you to be part of a search in a different sport yeah um you know what what chris did was uh he had uh um his candidates meet some of the other business leaders uh um you know people within the other organizations and, and, and under illich holdings to get a feel for who we all are the kind of the culture within the companies the way we do things um, and I really enjoyed it. We sat down and I got a chance to talk with them. Uh, honestly, I could have, could have spent all day, uh, uh, you know, on so many different topics, picking his brain. So I, I enjoyed, really enjoyed meeting the candidates. Uh, I think, uh, they appreciate that, uh, getting to know the people within, not just the Red Wings, but within all the different companies and, and how we go about, uh, uh go about things. So it was, uh, uh, really enjoyable for me to get to spend some time with these gentlemen. Thank you. Tom Galetti.
Hi, Steve. Thanks for doing this. Um, you mentioned earlier being cautiously optimistic. With the with the moves you made, though, do you feel like the expectations have been raised? Obviously, you've been going through a rebuild here. Do you feel like the players have grasped that that here there's there's a there's more you know that this isn't just this is next in what you're trying to do? Well, I think uh, you know, in talking with some of the players off and on throughout the off season, I think they have some excitement. The new faces coming in, some of the younger players that are coming over, maybe one or two of them. Uh, move into the lineup and make us a better team. So I think there's some optimism within uh, the ranks of our players. Um, what they they do, uh, it's important they recognize uh, there's some competition, not only jobs, but uh, ice time. And, and I believe that competition is really healthy and it's going to push guys to... Uh, um, to perform. And I, I, I do believe good athletes, you know, mentally strong guys really enjoy that challenge. I think, I think they recognize that, you know, they have to, some of the players that, uh, have to recognize, Hey, I gotta, I gotta perform here. I might, I, you know, I might lose my spot on this line. I might lose my spot in the lineup. And, and that, you know, as Max pointed, that goes to Grand Rapids as well. Like we've got some depth of, of, uh, depth, depth that, at a lot of positions now, uh, hopefully that translates to us being a better team as well. But I think it's gonna, it's gonna, it's an eye opener for the players that, that hey, I've got to really, I've, I've really got to produce or perform, not produce, but perform to get my ice time. Um, you, you were obviously a captain. What have you seen in, in Dylan Larkin's growth as in, into that role in the? Uh in the two seasons he's been coming. Yeah, I think he's getting, you know, he's feeling his way along when, uh, you know, how to deal with all, whether it's an on-ice situation, off-ice situation, whatever it may be, get a little bit more comfortable over time where, uh, you know, when to when to just let things go, uh, uh, when to address things. Uh, you know, I lean on Dylan a lot. I think Derek's going to lean on a lot just for, you know, get a sense of uh, uh uh, different situations, both again on and off the ice, uh, uh, from a player's per from these players' perspective, uh, I think he's just getting more and more comfortable with the role. And 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 you know, the one thing I've always encouraged him to do is just make sure you be yourself. Don't try to be Nick or uh, or Henrik or any of us uh, in the past. Just be yourself. He works hard. He's got a tremendous work ethic. I do really think he he cares about his teammates. He cares about the team. So. Um, again, I think it just, with each year, you kind of figure the role out where you need to be, when you need to be there, when you need to address something, when you need to let things slide. So I think Tom just experiences is making him more comfortable in the role. And, and last thing from me, uh, how eager are you to see what Jacob Verona can do in a full season? Obviously some good stuff after the trade and then last year with the injury, what can you put together in a full season? Well, he certainly has shown, uh, what is time with the Red Wings, um, uh, that he can that he can score. You know, he put the puck on a stick. He has that mentality to get it on and off his stick really quickly. He knows where to go to get open. Um, you know, I think he did score goals uh, when he came back at the end of the year. I'd like him to be more impactful in other areas of the game. Um, like he's very good. I'm not sure what Derek has planned as far as power play units and where these guys will play, um, but he's very effective on that as well. Uh, he, like all of our players, uh, if we're going to win hockey games, we get, get we want these guys all to really, you know, be a conscientious defensively. He's a goal scoring winger, and we expect them to do that. But like all of our guys, we're going to insist that they they uh, uh, have some defensive awareness as well. Bob Duff, do you feel, I guess, better about where you're at as an organization now? I mean, you you draft guys, you have hope but now you're starting to see them in action and making the move over here. Does it give you confidence that things are trending in the right direction? Um, not sure confidence is the right word. I hope things are trending in the right direction. I expect them to, I like, you know, we, the, the free agents being able to, add, you know, uh, add some free agents, address some needs through free agency. I think that, you know, it makes us a deeper team. I think that makes us a better team. But as you see some of the young players uh, that are drafted, even prior to me coming, it takes time. You know, we uh, you look at Michael Rasmussen last year, his, his uh, growth into becoming an, uh, you know, what I consider an NHL regular last year that by the end of the season was having a very positive impact. And is that four or five years, you know, four years post his draft, it just takes time as we, you know, keep saying over and over, 
and gradually we're starting to see some of the younger guys move into the lineup, have an impact uh, on the lineup. Um, you know, I, I think we're seeing some progress. Uh, I think it's, you know, I believe in the way we're doing it and I think we're going to improve. I'm hopeful that, that, that we're a better team this year. And I, I say that very cautiously because, you know, you, we all make these moves with the idea to be better. Sometimes it's just not a linear path and, uh, but I expect us to be better and I, I, I'm optimistic and I'm, you know, encouraged to see younger players moving into the lineup and, uh, and playing a bigger role. We saw it last year, I expect them hope to see it one or two more in this year and, and continue on with that. With, with Ed Vincent, you mentioned the fact that Sider got to play here in the AHL. He had experience on the North American ice that Simon doesn't have. Do you think that's more vital for a defenseman because, you know, their job is so difficult? Um, yeah, probably. I think, you know, just uh, what I found playing myself playing on the bigger ice surface and you see it like for the D-men, things happen a lot quicker. Guys are on top of you. You don't have as much room in the corners to maybe, you know, uh, you know, uh, deke and dive a little bit that, uh, you know, you run out of room very quickly. So it's, uh, um, uh, there is an adjustment for, I think just a harder position to play in general. You're, you know, forwards, your mistakes. There's a lot of guys that got, uh, you know, uh, uh your D cover up for you, your line mates cover up for you. And the goalie covers up for you for the D they got the goalie to cover up for them. He doesn't do it. Um, you're in trouble. So, uh, what I'm encouraged by, like he has played a lot, you know, these kids play so much international hockey. We talked about the world juniors this summer. He's played a lot on the, on the North American surf, surf uh, ice surface. So it's not completely foreign to him. I just, what I, what I do think, particularly with the puck, um, on the smaller, the, the D men need to learn then to move it quicker. Less is more. We always refer to Nick Lidstrom. He got it. He moved it, kept the game very simple. He never really put himself in bad spots. So, uh, Simon looks like, uh, in watching him last week, he looked pretty comfortable on the AC. He, he, he gets it. He moves it. Um, um, but you know, you do it against NHL players at the, that's really the highest level and the, the, the most speed, um, but he will adjust. I, I, you know, again, I think his play on, on, uh, North American rinks throughout his junior career, um, uh, gives him a good idea on what to do. And lastly, the word leaking out yesterday, it appears Canada is going to eliminate the COVID vaccination rec requirement to come to the country. So that would mean, I mean, I don't know if Tyler's had a change of heart. We haven't talked to him since last year, but assuming he still hasn't had it, that means he can actually be able to play those 10 games in Canada for you. What would that mean to have a you know yeah. guy like that yeah um well I, I read that yesterday there's i don't know if it's september 30th they're talking about so hopefully that is true that looks like it opens the door um to get back to normal for him have the ability to play in canada um which will help us we missed 10 games you know at at some point um not only with with the three teams in our division and then the western teams playing in canada we get, you know, one of our guys been on our first power play unit. He's been on our top set, one of our first two lines every year. And that will continue um, to, to lose him for, for those games is tough. And uh, if, if uh, you know, by chance we win more games, we're more competitive this year. Those points are more and more important to us eventually to, to uh, push for a playoff spot, whether it's this year or next year or whatnot. And then the likelihood of us, playing a team in our division in Canada when, when we become a playoff team is pretty high. So we, we expect, uh, you know, we're a better team with Tyler Bertuzzi in the lineup. So if that is in fact the truth, that's very, uh, that's good news for us and good news for Tyler. Thanks. Yeah. Larry Lage. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good, Larry. How are you? I'm good. Um, with, with Cider um, and Raymond, how much does it give you hope that potentially they are, you know, top end all star players that, you know, all franchises need to win significant games. So, uh, what's your question, Larry? Sorry. So, basically, my thought is the Red Wings have struggled because they haven't a top end all star players. And I'm not suggesting Raymond and Cider are that this year, you know, all stars, but they've seen they potentially track to me as being what this franchise is missing. But what is your opinion about that? Well, you certainly, you know, good teams have good players. You look at Colorado win the Stanley Cup last year. Some of the players they have on that team 
obviously this goes without saying you need top players to win in the league. Um, you know, where you mentioned those two young guys, um, they're good young players. Uh, they would both, uh, you know, they'd be the first to, to say, hey, I've got work to do. We need to get better. Um, I think they have tremendous potential. I think bo both really good young men, and I think they're both really driven. Uh, so I expect them to continue to get better. And again, ultimately, we need good players. And, uh, um, you know, we talk a lot about the lottery, uh, not having the success, you know, moving up at least in the lottery. But we've been very, very fortunate and lucky to have these kids come in and 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 uh, and have a real positive impact. And again, I, I mentioned Michael. We've got Joe Valeno coming. Uh, uh, Phillips Adina. I have, still have expectations for him to Im improve as a player. And we're going to continue, hopefully, to add the young players through the draft. And uh, um, but and you look at the top teams in the league; they got elite players. And uh, um, there's different ways to win a Stanley Cup. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have that uh, uber superstar or whatnot. We watched uh, St. Louis uh, with a tremendous, really well balanced team win the Stanley Cup uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so there's lots of different ways to do it. But ultimately, you need a a, a, a large group of good players to, to compete at that. Art Regner. Hi, Steve. Art, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, a couple of follow-up questions. You know, we've heard this thing about Edvinson that he's a year behind Mo as far as development goes. Mo had a, an extra year. Uh, yet, when I look at Simon's stats, for Frulunda last year, they're very comparable to what Mo did in the SHL. So when we're talking about a year behind, are you referring more to perhaps physical development more than mental? Because, you know, he seems to be kind of, he, he everything that's come his way, he's handled very, very well. I, I, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I do agree with you. Yeah, he's handled things very well. You know, uh, I, get, I, I guess I look at it, um, you know, Mo's a year older, uh, obviously. Uh, uh, he had a year in the American League, a year in the Swedish League. Um, Simon's just, you know, coming one year post-draft. Uh, um, you know, we're going to see. Uh, I, I just am trying to temper the expectation for him a little bit. Um, you know, I really, when, when Ritz came over, I was worried about him playing in the American League as an 18-year-old. I, I, uh, I wasn't sure how he would do. Honestly, I, you know, I didn't even know if he'd, he, he, was, he would be able to handle it. American League's tough. It's a physical league. The schedule is a grind. And he did really well. Um, so, I, you know, I, there, Simon has a lot of excellent attributes physically. Um, you know, he did play well. And that, that Swedish league, as I stated earlier, is a very competitive, very good league. He played on a good team in a very good program on a good decor. And he benefited a lot from that. Is it possible for him to step in and play in the NHL and, and be an impactful player? Yes, it is. But well, let's just wait and see. I wouldn't have predicted. I was again last year, even for Mo, I was I wasn't sure how he was going to do. And uh, honestly, he he exceeded what my initial expectations were for him. And and we'll just see how Simon does here. And uh, um, if he's ready, great. If he's not, that's okay. Uh, I think he's going to be a real good player in the league. And it's just, is it this year or, or is it Christmas? Or is it next year? We'll see. Um, Kosa at 19, you know, he does not lack confidence. He has stated several times, even during the prospects week here, that he wants his first year of pro hockey to be like right now. And there is this thing about maybe, especially for goalies at 19, that a majority of them are sent back to their junior teams. Yet, I am wondering, I, I've never thought that age was a big factor for you. I mean, if a kid can play, he's going to play. Uh, so is it because he's 19? Do you look at that and say, man, yeah, he's probably ticketed for junior? Or are you just, hey, whatever happens, happens? Yeah, I would. I don't have him necessarily ticketed anywhere right now. Um Let's just let, again, let's see our options are the Detroit Red Wings, the Grand Rapids Griffins in Toledo, or, or we could send them back to, uh, to play junior as an overage for a year. Those are the options. And ultimately I want him playing regularly and I want him playing at a level that, that he is challenged and, and, but can be successful. I think that, uh, um, is most important at this stage of the game. Um, you know, we, uh, uh, 
Bob mentioned it. I think it was Bob mentioned how tough it is playing as a defender, as a defenseman, which it is. Goaltending is a whole other level, specifically for these young players. They're very cautious about their their. I don't care how confident they are. Uh, you struggle in net. I couldn't imagine that. Like you, you know, as a forward, you rely on your teammates when things aren't going well more so than you, anybody else. The D men relying on their teammates, the goalie. Who's the goalie got to, to back them up? You know. Um, so I very, I'm very cautious with that, and uh, I just want him playing and whatever level um, he is getting an uh, ice time and and is uh, challenged and and doing well, and that's where I want him to play. I mean, one final quick question, Steve. Uh, Jonathan Bergeron, whom we haven't really mentioned, just set the. Uh... Uh, the most points by any rookie in Grand Rapids history. He seemed to really take, especially the second half to the AHL. Uh, what are your expectation levels for him? Is he uh, certainly a possible candidate to make this roster on opening night? He, you know what? I, I, I think Jonathan had an outstanding year last year. We, you know, really he was pushed. He was challenged by, uh, by Sean Horkoff, Dan Cleary, who oversee the player development to really work on things. Ben Simon and the coaching staff, he did a really good job. He adjusted well. I saw him here in Detroit last week. He's in excellent shape. Uh, he really had a very good year. He's kind of, he's, hey, I'm glad you bring him up because he uh, quietly went about his business and really did well. And he's transitioning his game uh, to maybe being a little bit more uh, um, successful or, or productive on the uh, North American ice surface in a different league. So um, I'm very interested and encouraged to, to see him here in the preseason and uh, he's an interesting one he's worked really hard and very happy with his attitude and determination and uh, you know we'll see how he does here in the preseason but it's uh, it's one for all of us to follow closely thank you steve really appreciate it take care yep. kevin allen hi steve thanks for doing this uh, you mentioned um for rasmussen earlier and uh, last year as you mentioned uh, he seemed to embrace the role he was given and improved in it and was, seemed to be a force at the end. But, you know, a new coach is coming in. And I wonder, is there an opportunity for him uh, to expand his role? I mean, now that he's shown that he can certainly do that, uh, the role he was given, but, you know, is there more of an opportunity for him uh, to, to move up? Well, there definitely is, you know, like ultimately the coaches are going to play who's performing the best, who helps them win the, win, uh, win the most games. Um, I, I think, you know, Michael took a significant step last year. I've been here for three years and I've gotten to know him and I've watched him mature as a young man on the ice, off the ice, um, his work ethic. Uh, uh, it's been uh, um, really positive for us. And I think Michael feels really good about it. He's worked really hard to get where he's at. And I think he's really determined uh, to continue uh, improving as a hockey player. So you know, he's a big guy. His skating is good. Um, he's good or down low. Uh, again, like all our guys, we're, we're going to try to continue to harp on them, becoming good two-way players. And uh, that's going to go for everyone, Michael included. But there's definitely room for him, you know, for all guys to, to move forward and move up. And you can never have too many good players. And I think we're far from having too many good players. But these kids all seem to be really motivated and really driven. And, and Michael in particular – his confidence is growing as he sees he puts the work in and, and the changes in his game and in his performance. And I think that's just motivating him even more to uh, continue to push and get better. Um, as I was watching the prospect tournament, I was kind of struck by, you know, we're at the stage in the rebuild where you had a, a fair, you know, a good number of your prospects were here for that. And I wondered kind of what your assessment was of, you know, considering the guys coming over from Europe and Soder Bloom and Vero and Johansson and everything, are the pro are, is the progress overall, just in general, of your prospects about where you thought it would be? Are you a little bit ahead? But what's your assessment generally of where your prospects are? Um, you know, again, uh, I think we have some prospects, Kevin. Um, you know, some of them aren't here, whether it's uh, – Casper in Sweden or uh, uh, Carter Mazur and at college, several of our guys at college. So we have a group um, that we're starting to put, you know, you know, amass a pool of prospects that are going to eventually uh, work their way into the lineup. Not all of them will make it, but it was encouraging to see some of those kids here and perform well and getting closer to becoming NHLers. So uh, we just kind of, again, stick with the process where, you know, my intention at this time to hold on draft 
picks and continue to draft well, uh, um, or, or try to draft well, excuse me. And, uh, and just be patient with these young guys and let them work their way into becoming NHLers. Yeah. And then finally, uh, you know, when you're rebuilding, you don't talk much about what's going on in the division, at least not early in the process, but you, you're at the point now, where I think fans and I'm betting you do too, looked around this summer and saw what, you know, teams within your division uh, were doing, you know, Ottawa improved, Buffalo's got a couple of good young players coming. What, what was, what is your assessment of kind of, uh, you know, where you're at in the division now as it's gone through some changes. Yeah. So. Uh, I think, I think we're in a very exciting division right now. You look at the, you know, the, not necessarily the rebuilding team, but if you start with you know, Toronto, uh, Tampa and Florida, all have their nucleuses for the foreseeable future kind of locked in and they're pretty impressive nucleuses. Um, and then, so I think they're going to be good teams for the, for, very good teams for the foreseeable future mentioned Buffalo of, you know, from where I sit, look, have drafted extremely well and are moving their young players into the lineup. They're continuing to get better. Uh, Ottawa uh, has an excellent group of young players and made some moves this summer to, uh, to improve their team. I think they're a better hockey club um, in Montreal, you know, drafting so high and so many draft picks uh, coming in over the last year and this year and even next year. Um, these, you know, our division is interesting. You got the good teams at the top and the, and the rebuilding teams starting to move their younger players in. So we're, we're, you know, we're in a tough division and we look to get to, to improve and to remain competitive with these teams. It's not going to be easy. Thank you very much. Last question, Carlos Monarez. Yeah. Hey, Steve, you, you've talked about, um, you expect the team to be better this year. How do you measure that improvement? Are there like hard statistical benchmarks that you want the team to meet in various areas, or is there some other way that you're going to measure that improvement? Yeah, uh, Carlos, I think the most obvious is at the end of the season, the wins and losses, that would be it. But, and, the, you know, more importantly for me, I, I look at, you know, we can talk about all the different, the new advanced statistics and all that they lead to ultimately are your goals against, you know, the best teams in the league have uh, re reduced their goals against, they reduce their chances against, um, your special teams are good. So I look at those areas, uh, if we can, you know, uh, uh, reduce the chances against, reduce the shots against, generate more chances, generate more shots. Um, uh, just th those statistics produce uh, more victories. So I want, I, you know, if our team can be, be in, you know, a harder team to play against, be more competitive in games, that's it. That's improvement for us. That's advancing for us. So, um, uh, you know, that, that I hope it translates in, in points in the standings. We're all going to look at, uh, we had, I think 32 wins this year. We can go, you know, whether it's, you know, a num any number, pick a number above 32, that's progress, but more importantly, as a hockey team being harder to play against, uh, and that is, you know, I'll kind of keep harping on it as uh, being stronger defensively uh, is most important. And I think we, you just look at those obvious stats. If we can reduce our goals against our shots, against our chances, against improve our special teams, that'll be, that should translate to wins. But even if it doesn't this year, we're on the right path. This is my last question is just, um, you know, you guys were six points out of a wild card spot, I think in like mid February. So now you have a better coach, you got better free agents, you got better draft picks, your team president's probably better because he's more experienced and uh, savvier. Would it be crazy to expect at least like a push for the playoffs toward the late part of the season? Uh, Carlos, I, I'm not prepared to, to say that. I, you know, I look at our season last year. Um, we looked at our, our, you know, we're concerned. You look at your schedule, you know, obviously our goals against was a concern and we, we, we were beating teams. It, it was progress. I felt it was progress because the teams that we expected for the most part to be competitive against, we were. And then we had a lot of, you know, play the top teams in the league on the road in the second half of our schedule. And, you know, even the first part of the schedule, when we went on the road against real good teams, we weren't all that competitive. I think we won a game in Boston, won nothing when you know, Ned stood on his head uh, to win us that game. But the... To me, all the indicators of us were, I don't think we're ready to contend last year. Um, in the second half, it kind of brought us back down to earth. Um, so, uh, you know, I go this season, we'll see how we progress. If we can, if we can um, 
be more competitive on the road, match up a little bit better against the top teams when we go into their building. If we can win on back-to-back -back nights, that would give me some optimism that, 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 Hey, maybe we can push for it. But for me to talk about the playoffs now, it's so far off. And, you know, I just, as we're talking about our division, if you, you know, you kind of today, not knowing what's going to happen, but today you'd say, you know, probably Toronto, Tampa and Florida, there's the three teams in our division. We expect to make the playoffs and you pick whichever three in the Metro then the rest of us are competing for two wildcard spots and it's a real challenge. So I'm hoping we're there, but time will tell and I'll be able to take, you know, give you a, a, a better answer. I don't know, pick a point in the season. Maybe we can revisit it. O opening night. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Thanks, Carlos. All right. Those are all the questions we had today. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Steve.